ladies and gentlemen, good morning from Beijing. It is my great pleasure to share with you through this platform uh, some information on the development of China's BIT in the last decade. Uh, I'm from Kustrak. Since the year 2008, when China launched its super ministry reform to cut several number of its ministry level agencies while reorganizing several other agencies and departments, the function of guiding the urban passenger transport development came from Ministry of Urban and Rural Development to Ministry of Transportation. Kustrak has paid great attention to the key scientific themes on BRT development and the next generation BRT since then. Having taken some research projects sponsored by the Ministry of Transport on BRT, I think it is necessary to make a conclusion for good experiences or bad lessons learned from China's BRT development cases. And I would like to take this opportunity to share with you. Uh, welcome for comments or questions. My presentation will focus on two parts. The first part will identify the key problems on China's BRT development. As we know, the BRT system has developed quite quickly in the Chinese cities. Most systems have achieved good performances. However, the cities also made across some problems, which could affect the operation efficiency and external benefits. And the second part will raise development suggestions for the next generation BRT system in China, including the thoughts on the improvement of existing system and the construction for new systems. Okay, the outline of my presentation will be uh, these three parts of the view of BRT development in China. Uh, BRT system in tropical cities and lessons learned. In December uh, 2012, the State Council issued the guideline of promoting public transport priority development, which was considered as the guidance for promoting public transport development in China. The guideline pointed out that the cities need to scientifically identify their public transport modes based on the city practices and the city plan, which include BRT and modern trams, etc. In September 2013, the State Council issued another guideline for promoting urban infrastructure construction, which also raised the importance of promoting BRT development. First, I will give an overview uh, of BRT development in China. We could see from this picture that since the BRT Line 1 constructed in Beijing in the year 2005, in the past decade, 23 cities have built their BRT system with an overall operation miles for over 2,700 kilometers and an average daily passenger volume for 2.74 million percent time. BRT system has achieved a great development in China. The Chinese cities built their BRT systems in different modes. In Guangzhou, Beijing, and Zhengzhou, the BRT systems are traditional, while in some other cities, as Kunming, the city introduced and integrated the successful element of BRT system into its traditional public transport system in terms of an upgrade of its existing bus system. And of course, the operation efficiency and the reputation of BRT in different cities are quite different. Let's look at this picture. Here, I choose two indicators to analyze the operation efficiency of BRT system in China. The horizontal axis is the passenger capacity during peak hour, and the vertical axis is the average operation speed during peak hour in the downtown area. 
and we set a passenger capacity operation speed model. It is recognized internationally that the BRT corridor operation speed should exceed 20 kilometers per hour, and the peak passenger capacity should exceed 9,000 person time. We divide the space into four areas accordingly. It is clear from this picture that there is no high capacity, high speed BRT system in Chinese cities. The Guangzhou BRT is high capacity, medium speed. Xiamen and Chengdu BRT is medium capacity, medium speed. And BRT system in most of the cities are medium capacity and medium speed. From the picture, we could easily find that the operation efficiency and external benefits are quite different from different BRT systems which is mainly because of the function and orientation of BRT corridor in urban transport system. And also there's something to do with the construction standard. However, there's no denying that there's a good, great space for improvement of existing BRT system. So to identify the key problems of BRT development and point out the development direction of next generation BRT is, is extremely important in China. First, I will make an introduction to the first generation BRT system in terms of uh, cases in three Chinese cities. The first is the Kunming BRT, which is opened in the year 1999 with five corridors, 47 kilometers bus lanes, and 63 stations. And the peak demand is uh, 8,600 uh, pphpd. Kunming BRT is not considered as a mature and a perfect BRT system, for its operation speed is very low, uh, even less than 15 km per hour in the downtown area. There is no specific BRT vehicle and a ticket sale outside of the vehicle, and the station environment has not been improved compared with the traditional bus system. So, However, the central bus lane solved a big problem. Uh, the confliction of bus and bikes. Uh, we could note uh, from the picture that many intersections have been converted from four phases to two phases. And uh, uh, the Kuomin Beijing Road the peak volume is 8,600 passengers per hour per direction. And the speed is 10 kilometers per hour. And we can see from this picture the daily experience in Kuomis busway corridors. Uh, it's like a, a train, very congested. And we could see from this picture that when passengers enter or exit from the BRT station, they need to run across a wide road, which is not safe at all. The second city case is Beijing. The BRT in Beijing, which studied operation since the year 2005, is the first BRT system in completely mini in China. Now there are four BRT lanes with over 35 kilometers operation routes and 60 stations. However, the Beijing BRT is a closed system, a fixed line operation. Uh, all BRT vehicles operate in the fixed corridors and there's no exchange station or primary branch road. So the passenger volume in BRT corridor is just about one third of the overall demand. And the other 66% of the passengers choose to take regular buses, which also operates in the shared, line, uh, shared lanes in BRT corridors. And it is not so convenient for passengers to take the BRT. The picture shows the access to BRT corridor. Uh, though it is much safer than the Kunming system, but still not so easy for passengers. 
And here the picture shows the pedestrians access tunnel to BRT station. The lanes are still mixed, so regular buses and BRT vehicles operate in the same corridor. The vehicles have been replaced by articulate. Hi, it looks like um, Chumay has disconnected, so we will give her some minutes to try to read again and continue with the presentation, so please be patient and I will advise what we will do. We have to make back so we can continue. To me, we can hear you, I think. Please connect your mic. During the peak hours, which means the BRT system should not meet the passenger flow demand in BRT corridors. Uh -huh. Okay, the picture, it's... it's could you see this picture? Um, a black screen here. Okay, uh, the picture here, I don't know why uh, we could not see. It's, it, the picture shows the overloaded passengers have led to a runway degradation, uh, degradation in Corridor 1 in Beijing. And here the picture shows the damaged station in the BRT Corridor uh, Line 2. Here, the, uh, here is a better stations in outer part of uh, BRT Corridor 2. Over uh, also, we could see overtaking mixed traffic, right side uh, doors. It's also the uh, Beijing BRT Corridor. We could see the offset station in Corridor 2. Okay, here, the third case is Hangzhou BRT, which opened in the year 2006. There are... Uh, okay, it's, uh, it's, it's still 
Beijing BIT? Okay. The third case is Hangzhou BIT, which opened in the year 2006. There are two corridors with 19 kilometers bus lanes and 50 stations. Peak capacity is 6,600 PBHPD. The Hangzhou BIT has a modern design for its station and vehicles. The BIT lanes lead to the right of the motor vehicle lane, and it is separate from the slow traffic lane and the non-motorized vehicle lane. We could see the severe bus and mixed traffic congestion here. Uh, to conclude the characteristics of China's BRT system, I should say low demand BRT lane, worse conditions for mixed traffic, and worse conditions for the large majority of waiting passengers in the corridor. Hangzhou's BRT uh, is now open to uh, 12 meters feeder buses, serving four routes in addition to the two track lines. Uh, using 80 meters BRT bus routes. At the very beginning, 100 BRT planned and uh, operated in terms of a clothing system in the middle of the corridor where there is a severe traffic jam for regular buses and cars. There were about 20 BRT vehicles operating in the corridor in uh, one direction power, uh, while uh, which led to a strong rejection by the public upon its opening in the year 2006 and resulted in two consequences. The one thing is uh, the other vehicles often occupy BRT lanes, especially during peak hours. Until now, in the downtown area in Hangzhou, this kind of lax management still exists in BRT lanes. The other thing is the management authority has realized that the closing system doesn't work well. And to improve the BRT use rate, it is necessary to open new BRT lanes to connect the different areas together. Now the non-stop BRT routes direct serve have opened to Public, which could meet passengers' demand for less exchange and uh, traveling fast. Uh, now in Hangzhou BRT corridor, there are about 70 BRT vehicles operating in the corridor in one direction power, with a PPHPD at 6,800, which is about two times of the pa uh, car passenger flows. Uh, the station environment has been greatly improved, which is uh, much more comfortable and cleaner for passengers. But still, we could find uh, runway uh, degradation, which indicates the overload of BRT vehicles. And we could see from this picture that at one time, only one bus can open its doors, and the others have to quit. During peak hours, sometimes there is a severe congestion, which looks like a BRT train. Uh, and here, uh, the curbside bus uh, base, uh, base die stops are very poor results for buses, bicycles, and pedestrians. Also, from uh, this picture, we could see that uh, the mixed traffic, and also it's not very easy for, uh, not very safe for pet strains. Uh, the above three first generation BRT systems have their positive characteristics which could meet the different situation of city transport. However, none of them have been a convincible and a reproducible uh, PRD system for the reference of other cities in China. The second generation PRD system has improved a lot in some aspects, such as more modern vehicles and uh, direct serve routes etc. Though most BRT system had been designed in a closing way until the year 2008, for example, the Changzhou and Xiamen BRT. However, most of the BRT system choose non-stop, uh, I mean the direct serve operation nodes in the system planning and design, for example, Dalian, Zhengzhou, Zhaozhuang, and Hefei BRT system.
like many other cities, the Changzhou city built its BRT system because the light rail planning need the approval from central government, which is very difficult. But to build a BRT lane uh, was um, was easier for the city. So Changzhou city opened two BRT lines in January 2008 and in May 2009. The government authority realized that it is necessary to allow some BRT lines to enter and exit from BRT corridors. Otherwise, the passenger demand will decrease deeply. So the system was designed as a direct serve operation. Uh, the Changzhou, uh, the operation modes for the Changzhou BRT was a combination line. Uh, have the line one, one branch, three regional lines. And uh, for line two, have one branch, two regional, and uh, one loop line. Uh, for the system is changed to a regular basis. Um, this, at the same station, the same direction is changed for free. And the fare of BRT was the same as the regular bus. Usually uh, one yuan for uh, one trip. Uh, if you use IC card, there's a 60% discount. And for student IC card, 30% uh, 30 discount. Um, okay. The Chandra BRT is of distinct, uh, distinctive features and very impressive with different kinds of station settings and modern vehicles. And uh, passengers could enter or exit from the station through the ground. However, there's a big problem that as the same as the BRT system in Hangzhou, Xiamen, Dalian, and Kunming, Changzhou BRT's lack of a good design for station and road, which could hold high passenger capacity. Uh, what is see from here? Uh, critical uh, 50 meters se uh, section of the city center. The BRT corridor is open to uh, mixed traffic and is very congested during peak hours. Uh, the stations located at the intersection sometimes without the increase, which block the intersections and the pedestrians cross the road. Uh, very, it's very uh, not safe, and uh, even the traffic flow is not so high at the present. Uh, the Xiamen, Xiamen BRT here, Xiamen opened a splendid BRT highways in September 2008. The BRT system was built in the three main passenger corridors in the city with a length of 49 kilometers, 40 stations, including a 5,500 meter long bridge and tunnel. The Xiamen BRT is the first branch uh, uh, primary road BRT corridor in Asia. However, this change mechanism between the uh, BRT uh, branch and the primary road is not so good. Though the system supplied with uh, uh, ITS, however, the integration is not so well. The passengers have to pay twice when uh, exchanging from uh, BRT uh, primary road to the branch, and uh, there's no discount for their exchange. We could see from this picture, so from above, that the BRT highway is uh, closed. It's separate from other transport modes. And there's tunnel in the corridor, and road, uh, road ride priority is ensured for BRT vehicles. Xiamen BRT has achieved operation effect for improving uh, passenger capacity and uh, the operation speed. Uh, the one-way passenger volume power is uh, about 7,900, uh, ranked number three in Asian area, uh, just lower than that in Guangzhou in China. The average speed during rush hour is about 27 kilometers per hour. However, the station space we could see here uh, is uh, still too narrow, which se uh, severely limits the BRT capacity and uh, the vehicles in the station at one time. 
Xiamen BRT has a great passenger uh, ITS system, uh, IC card charge system, and modern vehicles, which has improved a lot compared with regular buses. The Xiamen government is considering to change BRT highways to light rail system. Uh, it is forecast that there should be three-minute interval uh, during light rail vehicles so that the final system capacity will be lower than the existing BRT system. Uh, the picture shows the BRT feeder route map. Uh, however, the safety or security of the BRT highway uh, had been emphasized since the fire in the year 2013. Uh, how to ensure the safety and the accident rescue in the BRT highway has become a new theme for the government authority, uh, the BRT operators, and also the researchers. Uh, let's go to the Hefei BRT. The Hefei BRT opened in the year 2010 with two corridors, 13 kilometers bus lanes, and 14 stations. Hefei BRT has many uh, anticipated characteristics, uh, including BRT vehicles with both sides uh, doors and a single central station or platform, which meets the requirements of both sides open door BRT vehicles. Uh, passing lanes, uh, in station, and a corridor across the city center. We could see here the BRT station, a uh, BRT platform, uh, in the middle of the street. And also the delays at the four phase intersections. Passengers traveling in both directions wait together in a central platform, which saves land resources. But sometimes it is very crowded for uh, the passengers. The above three BRT cases are second generation BRT system compared with the first generation BRT. There has been great improvement as the application of modern vehicles and uh, uh, direct surf lines, etc. To meet the requirement of passengers to make their travel mode convenient and more comfortable, the Chinese cities are exploring the third generation BRT. Uh, express lines during peak hours and also the short lines or regional lines and this direct serve BRT systems. Uh, BRT bus can run outside the corridor so the passengers can have a different choice. We could see some key statistics to go to BRT like the peak passenger flow uh, about 26,900 passengers per hour per direction. It's more than any other metro line in mainland China, except for the Beijing subway line too. Uh, and also its daily rush ship uh, is around 800,000 passengers trip per day. It's also more than any other metro line in Guangzhou. Uh, its passenger boardings, passenger uh, boardings has been a world record. It's the world's longest BRT station, the world's highest BRT bus volumes, and also it has uh, created several firsts in China. Uh, it's the first BRT system in China to include bike parking and bike sharing in the BRT station design. Uh, it's the first BRT system in the world to include direct connecting tunnels between metro and BRT stations. It's the first BRT system in China with BRT station bridges connecting to adjacent buildings. It's also the first BRT system in China with more than one BRT operators. Uh, we have three corporate groups consisting of seven different bus operating companies. They are operate the BRT routes. 
uh, also it's the first BRT system in Asia to determine station size based on passenger demand for all stations in the BRT system. Uh, we could see from this picture uh, a typical scene uh, before uh, at the bus stop congestion here and a typical scene at uh, the Gangting BRT station before the BRT implementation I mean be before the BRT was built and here the same site uh, after the BRT was built so has the, the traveling environment has improved a lot and uh, we could see uh, from above that the Gangting BRT station which is integrated in the urban transport system with strong oneness. The station space is wide uh, with route map, electronic information sign, uh, waiting seats, standing area, and the blind road. This is the section design of Zhongshan BRT corridor. Between the stations, there are two lanes for BRT vehicles and six lanes for social traffic. Um, at the station, we design uh, four lanes for BRT, including two lanes for overtaking. And also, social traffic will still have six lanes. Uh, here we could see that the Guangzhou BRT is uh, the it's the metro level capacity delivered by buses, and also provides mass uh, new mass transit options for rapidly growing cities in China. The integration of BRT station bridge and building here with a double time bike parking under the bridge, so very convenient for passengers. Okay, it's black. It's black screen again. Uh, here, I would like to show you a map uh, of the Guangzhou BRT integrated with Metro. Uh, there are three uh, subway stations which could be integrated in the BRT station directly, and in the future, there are three more stations to be integrated. Here is uh, the. Uh, BRT Metro connection at the Shipai Chiao station in Guangzhou BRT. We could see it's very modern uh, exchange system between the BRT and the Metro. And here is the BRT Metro Mall connection at the Shipai Chiao. So passengers could go directly uh, from uh, BRT to the mall, shopping mall. And also, uh, along the uh, Zhongshan Dadao station, there are uh, 18 stations, 1,000 buses. Uh, we could see that uh, here, uh, they have uh, the BRT system has extended to 113 stations with 5,000 bikes distributed along uh, Huajin Xinchen station to Xiayuan station, surrounding a residential commercial to make the last kilometer travel demand and a short trip in a corridor. The picture shows the public uh, bikes at uh, Huajin Xinchen BRT station. The bike lane is paved with uh, uh, separated by a line of trees. And the bike sharing station in Tianhe Park uh, BRT station here. Okay, now let's come to the lessons learned. From the cases of the three-generation BRT system in Chinese states, we can find a lot from uh, the good lessons or bad lessons learned. And first, there's many uh, critical aspects to BRT project success. We should see the some elements like corridor selection, data collection and analysis, operational design, institutions and regulations, communications and outreach, control center and ITS. Uh, for the stations, 
and fare collection, vehicles, intersection design, signal faces, model integration, etc. Uh, the first BRT corridor should be built in an area where there is high passenger demand and severe congestion, including the downtown area, so that to employ the advantages of BRT system in terms of saving time, saving bus vehicles, and cutting expenses for improving speed, etc. And the infrastructure needs to be planned and designed properly together with the operation plan for meeting passenger demand. We know that the design for BRD is not just the infrastructure, but also related with institutional settlement, regulation, funding resources, operation modes, contract, marketing and communication, IDS and vehicles, in sexual design, etc. However, most of the questions could be solved during the operation process, except for infrastructure design, like the layout of stations, the scale and architecture design, in the section and the TDM, which is very difficult to adjust during the operation. And uh, compared with the single operator mode involving uh, various of BRT operators make the requirements for the standardization and the controlling of system more complex and the departure frequency of BRT vehicles need to be controlled and planned by the government. Uh, by contract. It is assumed that the government pay the cost of, uh, of uh, the operation based on the kilometers vehicle run, but not the passenger volume, especially for those stations outside the vehicles. However, there are many advantages to involve multiple BRT operators. Effective competition among different operators allow the government to set a higher requirement for service quality and other standards uh, for operators, for example, to update their uh, operation vehicles. And the intermodal integration is often neglected during BID design, which is not good for the BID system development. We know that a successful BID corridor should not only be an impressive transport project, but should also be a beautiful urban landscape. So that's all. Thank you very much for your attention. And also thanks also for the colleagues from LCBIT to offer us such a wonderful platform. Thank you.